each year is an opportunity to be a champion. And uh, as soon as you take it for granted, it's gone. We just came together as a team when we was at the most crucial point. It's almost like it was scripted, you know, like somebody sat down and wrote it down. Respect is all a part of what we're doing. And uh, we respect the fact that everybody ties their shoes up tight and goes out to work every night. And here we are in a position to do something that no other Laker team has done before. It's a dream come true for myself to be even mentioned in the same breath as Jordan and, and Russell. You know, only a couple teams have been able to three-peat and to be one of them. It says a lot about our team. It's been a special ride for me. We've been through a lot. We're a close-knit group and nothing can bring us apart. And we know what it takes, being that we've been there before. With a blend of talent, will, and chemistry, the Los Angeles Lakers had won two straight NBA titles. And with their championship formula intact, they set out together in their pursuit of history. Let's go for that 3 -P. We're a confident team. We know what we can do. Uh, we've been through a lot the last two years, and we feel like we can beat anybody, and we're ready to roll. We have guys on the team that are competitive and that want to win, and that's what motivates them. The fact that we won two championships makes everybody, you know, love that feeling that we had the last two seasons and want to continue to feel that. As the season began, the Lakers seemed more invincible than ever, winning 16 of their first 17 games. Check. A slam dunk Shaquille O'Neal. But as the weeks wore on, success would become more elusive. The Lakers would lose center Shaquille O'Neal to nagging injuries. And they were also losing games to some of the worst teams in the league. I can see what people wondered if we had the, the stamina or the uh, will to win a third time. He misses again. The Chicago Bulls have upset the world champion Los Angeles Lakers. And they are going to beat the two-time defending champion, Los Angeles Lakers, and this place is Bedlam. But uh, when the, these guys hit, needed to, they, they stepped up to the plate. In previous years, their struggles might have torn them apart. But instead, the Lakers pulled together, relying on the bond they had forged over the past two seasons. The maturation of our team has been incredible. We've been through so much together. More than a team, the Lakers had become a family, one that had grown up together under head coach Phil Jackson, who had found a way to unite them. He's done a, done a tremendous job instilling the, the teamwork, the play together, play for the other guy on the team type of attitude that, you know, guys don't want to let the other guy down. And at the center of this collective effort was the Lakers' unstoppable force, Shaquille O'Neal, who had also grown as he had now evolved into a more complete player than ever before. Shaq slam dunk. Shaq has got it in the post. Oh, they slam dunk. Watch out. Just too big. Just too strong. Just, Just too good. <laughs> Kobe Bryant had taken over as the game's most spectacular player, but he had also learned how best to use his skills for the good of the team. Kobe is blessed with a lot of individual talent. His competitiveness allows him to, at certain times, just take, take the game over. And I think the, the good thing about it is that he's learned when to step up, and when to kind of take a back seat and let Shaquille do his thing. So that, that's the beauty of what they, they have learned over the last three years, is how they can really complement each other. 
Supporting the two leading men were role players like Robert Ory, Derek Fisher, the Lakers' point guard, and forward Rick Fox, all of whom had proven themselves under pressure. Well, because we've been through so many battles, uh, the trust uh, naturally grows. Uh, the more wars you fight together, the more you understand uh, the people that you're in battle with. And I have all the confidence in the world in Robert Ory, Rick Fox, and, and Derek Fisher. The trust had to be developed. Uh, Shaq and Kobe, we knew, were superstars in this league. We knew they were the cornerstone of our franchise, but developing the, the, the pieces around that were still needed. During the Lakers' championship run, Fox had found his niche as the player who did all the little things that helped add up to some of the team's biggest victories. There's a point where you have to pull your weight too, and you have to be as big as Shaq and Kobe. If it's only for two minutes, if it's only for five minutes, if it's for only one game, you know, there ha you have to be there. Rick Fox at the defense and then offensive end. He deserved that one. I think Rick is a consummate professional in terms of doing whatever it takes to help the team win. Ori had played the role of late game hero with his uncanny ability to deliver in the clutch. What can you say? Big play Rob, you know, uh, kind of lays in the weeds if you don't need him. Uh, but when you need him, you know he's going to be there to hit a big shot for you. Providing stability and poor leadership was Fisher, whose cool hand and cool head had made him an invaluable member of the cast. He may be uh, our smartest basketball player. He knows all situations, what to do in all situations, both offensively and defensively. And uh, he's, he's, a, he's a special guy. And as they looked to the playoffs, the Lakers would use the trust they had built in each other to see them through on the journey to a three-peat. Bottom line is the best guy to the worst guy. They, we all have to have a mutual respect for each other as professionals. And for a team, respect is ultimate. Respect for your coaching staff, as coaches respecting your players, and as teammates respecting each other and what we have to go through to win. And this basketball team has developed that. As the Lakers prepared for the playoffs, their first opponent would be a familiar rival, the Portland Trailblazers a team they had eliminated for the past five seasons. Tighten it up. Tighten it up. You gotta, you gotta get back to business. This is still work. We had a, a real trial with Portland during the regular season. It gave them a certain amount of confidence going into the playoffs that yeah, this can be done. And so they came in with renewed fervor. Portland was ready and eager for another shot at the champions. And no blazer had been bolder than Reuben Patterson, who claimed he could stop Kobe Bryant. But as the series began, Portland would quickly discover that there was just no stopping Kobe. Kobe Bryant. How do you stop that? Bryant again for three. Oh, good. This time from the right corner. Kobe's rising to the occasion. The Kobe stopper, Patterson, lost him behind the screen. Yeah. Kobe led the Lakers to a victory that would shake Portland's confidence. In game two, the Blazers would use more physical tactics to try and contain the Lakers, but could not contain their own emotions. And all right, some pushing and These two teams love to hate each other. They professed they were going to play physical. They got physical. They did everything they thought would disrupt us. Yet, with the resolve we had going into the playoffs, we prepared for that. And there was no better preparation than having Shaquille O'Neal. With Shaq dominating, L.A. would take game two. Low right O'Neal, oh. Shaq with a jam. Shaquille oh. O'Neal. Corey oh, throws it back. Here comes Bryant and O'Neal. O'Neal. Look at Shaq. He's telling the fans, I got a left hand too. Oh, that big guy is nothing but entertainment. Nothing but entertainment. Kevin Jordan score. Fabulous play by Shaq. I'm a real last thing I'm left in the game, and I'm going to stay down there. I like banging. I like running. I like jumping. I like dunking. I like getting fouled. So that, that, that's just playing right into my hands. As the series shifted to Portland, the Lakers were poised for a sweep. But the Blazers were not prepared to cooperate as they took control of the game. 
Sotomayor pushing for the money for Here's Pippen. Long pass for Wells. Certainly an attack mode by the Blazers that has not only gotten them back in the game, but gotten them the lead. With the Lakers trailing by two and just seconds away from defeat, they were in dire need of a hero. And they knew exactly where to turn. 91-89 Blazers. Fox to inbound. Kobe calls for it. He has it again. Ruben Patterson, the Kobe stopper. Bryant, dishing off. Play was designed for Kobe to go one on one with the quote Kobe stop at Ruben and Kobe saw me in the corner and dished it to me and I was able to make a three with two seconds left to go on the clock. We knew Robert was gonna hit the shot. Because he's been hitting shots like that his whole career. The Los Angeles Lakers for the second consecutive year have swept the Portland Trailblazers. To get, you know, that third win in Portland uh, in the fashion we did, you know, that get our playoffs started out just right. Staples Center for this game one. In the conference semifinals, the Lakers would face San Antonio, a team out to avenge a humiliating defeat. The Lakers swept the Spurs in the Western Finals last year. The Tim Duncan was there, and it was a painful four games for him. What they did is they tried to psych themselves out and say, this is the team who we want to see. They remember that series. In actuality, I don't think they wanted to face us at all. Extreme signs of overconfidence here. Duncan off the fake, going at O'Neal, and scores! The Spurs with a 10-point lead. Duncan with a fake, lead in flip. Rejected by O'Neal off the glass. But then came a double dose of adversity for the Lakers. Injuries to Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant, temporarily forcing them to the bench. The San Antonio Spurs with a terrific opportunity to take game one. Wow, you know, you know, Shaq just went out, Kobe just went out. At that point, you either fall apart or you step up to the level you have to be at. The Lakers need desperately to get going. Left baseline, Fisher, his three, good! Fisher sticks it three out of the left corner. The Lakers coming alive. Under those circumstances, you know, that was big. Ten on the shot clock. Coming off the spin. Yes. Dramatic shot by Kobe Bryant. The Lakers have won game one. They would have to fight through it. And that's just what they did. We were fortunate. And yet it spelled something else for game number two. It, it spelled something that we knew that we were going to be tested. But in this test, the Spurs had all the answers. They're handling anything the Lakers try to throw at them. Down the middle, goes into Duncan, slam dunk. That's a brilliant play. The Lakers are in desperate position. Brian, final seconds. Lakers down by two. Kobe Paul for a traveling violation. He got caught. The Lakers are defeated. I think that they felt that they had stolen one on our home court and, you know, okay, now we have the home court advantage. Now we got them where we want them. You know, Kobe is a guy who, late in the ball game, always comes through. I think that lit a fire underneath this team. Everybody was kind of down. And uh, I just basically said, you know, the party's just getting started. The party just got started. We're going to go up to San Antonio and take both of these games. We're going to see who can party. Biggest crowd of the season. Both teams want to win desperately this critical game. The Lakers faced a rejuvenated Spurs team that received an emotional boost even before the game began. Congratulations, Tim Duncan, NBA most valuable player. Duncan, oh, a lot of contact. This is a very aggressive looking San Antonio. The Spurs had built a wave of momentum and they would ride it into the fourth quarter. San Antonio, a one-point lead. 36,000 or whatever it is in the building, screaming and hollering, expecting you to lose. And I thrive off, I thrive off of situations like that. I mean, those are moments I live for. He really takes that challenge personally. He can beat you by himself. That door, Bryant, what a victory roll. And Kobe Bryant has taken over here in the fourth quarter. It seems like he, he has something for the San Antonio Spurs. Another magnificent play by Bryant. My teammates uh, look to me. You know, they expect me 
to deliver in these type of situations. We got Stanley Brewer in the Alamo, though. In game four, the Lakers once again found themselves trailing in the fourth quarter. San Antonio closing in on another victory in this series. But once again, Kobe would deliver when they needed it most. And now, the final seconds would measure not just Kobe's talent, but his resourcefulness. Kobe bringing the shot clock down. Lost the dribble. Picked up by Fisher. Five on the shot. And here comes Fisher. Attacks the pull-up jump shot. No short. Bryant underneath. Back good. Kobe Bryant. And the Lakers have come from two back. It is hard to believe what we're seeing here today. Kobe, does anything scare you in the fourth quarter at all? Uh, no. In game five, the scene shifted, but the scenario was the same, as the Lakers would again take charge in the final minutes. Fox keeps going. Rick Fox extends to a four-point Lakers lead. Bryant putting the move on Bowen. Shot clock at five. Ori for three. Yes! The Lakers are headed. Going up to Sacramento is a tough task. And they're going to be pumped up. They're going to play. Uh, they're going to play their best. They're a very emotional ball club, and we have to be ready for that. Heading into the Western Conference Finals, the Lakers had lost just twice in their last 25 playoff games, and many had to wonder when they would even be tested. Where is the challenge? That's what that run to, to third championship has been about. Where is the challenge going to lie? The challenge would come from the Sacramento Kings, who had spent years building a team to contend with the Lakers. The Kings had earned the league's best record and home court advantage throughout the playoffs and were ready to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the champions. That Sacramento series was uh, what we were waiting for all season, to really feel challenged and to really feel like we would have to reach down extremely deep. between these two clubs. But the Kings would quickly learn that their record and their home court meant nothing to the Lakers. Here's Bryant to steal and the run out to with the right hand. Kobe Bryant. Fisher on the left wing, now works top of the key. A lob to Kobe for the two-hand jam. Kobe Bryant, two spectacular dunks. Behind Kobe's 30 points, the Lakers would capture game one, their 12th consecutive road playoff win. And what was billed as a heavyweight bout looked to some like a mismatch. Go in the locker room, we go, is this what we're dealing with? Is this supposed to be the challenge? And we still needed to have them show us. We needed to have them give us something that would say, okay, they're worthy of this matchup. There comes a time in the growth of a team where you just got to stand up. And it's time for Sacramento to stand up for this Lakers club. It's as though they've been bullied their entire existence, and at some point, you got to punch the bully yeah, back. Come on, guys, come on. Let's win this Let's go, baby. Hey, hey. Nobody wins here with the Kings. One, two, three, three. In game two, the Kings would show the Lakers that this would be a battle after all. And they showed why they had been the league's top team. Turkaloo to the right baseline, comes back out to Weber. Weber. Christian, wide open for three. 11 straight for Sacramento. The Kings have taken the lead. Devon's going strong to the hoop and dunks in the face of Samaki Walker. That's a bucket. The Kings had gained not just a victory, but a measure of respect and a surge of confidence. But back home in Los Angeles, the Lakers viewed game two as a bump in the road instead of a sign of things to come. We come out on our home floor in game three. It's still a belief that winning game three and four would put us up in the series 3-1. They jump out of the box. They shoot as good a percentage as you can shoot on, on an opponent's home floor in a playoff game. Now to Devon's into the lane. Vlade Devon's a collision, lost the ball. Maybe a recovery and hits the jumper on the fade left baseline. Nice the Kings had the Lakers on their heels and weren't about to let up. Lakers going with a big line Bibby a steal, shoots out of the right corner. Oh yeah, Bibby with four points in a row. 
Doug Christie bringing it back for the Kings. Spins right of the lane, down the lane, flips it up, no. Tip Doug Weber with two hands. Minute into the fourth, it's a 20-point lead for Sacramento. Baseline right, Jackson all the way through, a pitch out left to Bibby, and he knocks out a three on the left wing. Mike Bibby. With a convincing victory, the Kings had knocked some of the swagger out of the Lakers. Now we have a fight on our hands. We just have to fight. And we play better when we have to fight anyway. But in game four, the Kings would erase any remaining doubt that they were a threat to the Lakers. Right side, Weber. Weber turns on Ori. Weber drives on Ori. Into the right to the hoop for the jam. He let over. This is clearly a game all the momentum favoring the Sacramento Kings. Oh, it's been a stunner to this point. The Kings would take a 24-point lead, once again dominating the Lakers on their home floor. What the Kings have done is put in the minds of the Lakers, we can beat you and we can beat you anywhere at any kind of game you want to play. It appeared that Sacramento's Kings were knocking the NBA's Kings off their throne. I saw this look one other time in my career. And that was On where? the faces of the Detroit Pistons in the 91 Eastern Conference Finals. When after years and years of beating the Chicago Bulls, they were about to be swept out of the playoffs. Are you telling me we're looking into the future? I don't know, but oh. it looks the same. With the Lakers on the ropes, it was clear that they had reached a crisis point. With the game, the season, and the fate of their dynasty hanging in the balance. At that point, you either fall apart or you step up to the level you have to be at. And across the board, uh, to a man, the guys that have been here for the past five, six years, we've been in these experiences and these situations. And the Lakers would respond like champions as they embarked on a furious rally and stormed back into the game. The Lakers cut it back to 16. Here we come. Six to shoot. Kobe driving it down the lane. Puts it up on the run. No good. O'Neal the rebound. Shaq trying to load up. He powers the shot up and in. Suddenly things turning in favor of the Lakers. Kobe drives in the lane. Puts the shot up and in. Kobe Bryant. Less than a minute, 98-95, Sacramento. Corner, Ori for three. Oh, yeah! Robert Ori, the Staples Center, explodes to life as the Lakers are giving indication they're not through yet. Though the Lakers had answered the challenge with one of the greatest comebacks in playoff history, they hadn't come far enough. L.A. still trailed by two points, but would have one last chance in the final seconds. Now Ori out front, 10 seconds, Kobe Bryant against Christie. Kobe Bryant on the move against Christie, in for the right, flips the shot up, no good. O'Neal lays it up, oh. missed it. Ball tipped out to Ori, a straight on three. Good! The Lakers have won! Robert Ori's greatest hits tour continues. Oh, no doubt about it. He's got to be getting a Grammy for that one. I think a lot of us on the bench are trying to figure out if the ball had really gone in. <laughs> we were trying to figure out if the clock had expired if his foot was on the line, but it was another classic Robert Ory finish. Robert Ory's miracle not only tied the series, it added more fuel to this already simmering rivalry. Everybody could make that shot, you know, that's last, last shot. It's just like a lucky shot, that's all. You don't need to have a skills or some, you know, uh, in that kind of situation, just throw it and it goes in, goes in. Robert, Vlade was saying that it was basically just a luck shot, that situation, you just have to throw it up. Was it luck or was there more to it? Uh, it wasn't no luck shot. I've been doing that for uh, all my career, so he should, he should know. He better read, uh, read a paper or something. <laughs> the Kings had been dealt a crushing blow, but if there were any questions about their resolve, they would answer them in Game 5 as they battled the Lakers to another dramatic fourth quarter finish. Game number 5 coming down to the final seconds as did Game number 4. But the Lakers have a one point lead. And just like in Game 4, a hero would step forward. Bibby has it back, shoots the outside jump, oh! on the right side! Bibby sticks a 20 footer with 8.2 but the Lakers still had time to try to break the Kings' hearts once again. Kobe Bryant right in the lane against Jackson. Three seconds. Kobe's turnaround jumper right baseline. Rimming, no. Stoyakovic's the rebound. The Kings win. It was the biggest win in Kings franchise history, leaving them one victory from the finals. But their post-game party wasn't appreciated by their guests from Los Angeles. 
No, we're upset because they're out there celebrating like we're done. This was the end-all, be-all game for them. I don't think they realized it was a seven-game series. And first team to win four was going to be the team that moved on. And in game six, Shaq would take it upon himself to make sure there would be a game seven. Shaquille O'Neal carrying the load for the Lakers in this first quarter. He said bring the ball to him. He wanted the ball. He wanted to, to get things started, and that set the tone. And once he said that, you could just see the confidence uh, fill up and everybody else on the team. And then the Shaquille O'Neal show. Sean White left into O'Neal underneath for the jam, right in the face of Pollard, and a foul on Pollard. With 41 points, Shaq had forced the series back to Sacramento, and the Lakers had answered their wake-up call. Last night about 2.30 in the morning, somebody called me and said, big fella, let's make history. And I was like, who is this? He like, it's me, Kobe. And I told Kobe, let's come out, let's do it. I promise Kobe I'll be ready. I promise everybody I'll be ready. And we ain't going to uh, go away that easy. But back at Arco Arena, the Lakers would still have to overcome the Kings, their loyal fans, and history. It had been 20 years since a road team had won a Game 7 in the conference finals. Game 7 was going to be the truest test of all the lessons we've learned over the years. An opportunity to go out on the road and do the impossible. Beat LA! Beat LA! Beat LA! Go King! Championship is awaiting us now! No! We're going to war today, baby! It's go time! Right here in Arco! Let's go Sacramento! And as this final round approached, it was clear that there was plenty of fight left in the Kings. Lottie in the lane. To Weber, baseline right, works underneath. Off the D box for the jam. Quick pass. Still, the Lakers would not easily surrender what was theirs, taking a slim lead in the fourth quarter. But the Kings would battle back, carried once again by their young point guard, Mike Bibby who was showing that he, too, had the heart of a champion. Right corner, Bibby, he fires. Oh! And Bibby hits again. A one-point lead for Sacramento. And it seemed only fitting that Game 7 would once again come down to one final possession. Six seconds. Now O'Neal right of the lane against Weber. O'Neal's turnaround jumper. Rimming, no. Tip won't go. Tipped again, no. Overtime at Arco Arena. A lot of people felt like, man, we didn't want to go into overtime with this team. And then there were a lot of us that felt like, you know, this is just how we have to do it. This is it right here. This is it. This is it right here. We came too far. We came too far, fellas. We got led all the line. All season, the Lakers had wanted a challenge. Now they had what they had asked for. Yeah, Chris Webber connects, and the Kings have taken the lead. 102, 100, Sacramento. Comes back to Webber. Now to Bibby, left corner. He fires good. Mike Bibby sticks another one. Sacramento by two. In the closing moments, with the score tied, the Lakers were facing the greatest test of their three-year run. We have something that we say, uh, and it's how far we go back. Red light, green light. How far we go back, pity pat. You know, we go back. A long way and we've been too far to you know let this thing just slip away the game like the series had turned into a classic but with the pressure at its highest the lakers would be at their best and down the stretch of overtime they would refuse to relinquish their hard-earned crown into o'neill low left shaq with five to shoot 
O'Neal against Weber. Three to shoot. Turn around jumper. Good, O'Neal. Lakers are up on the bench. They can all smell it now. Christie inbounds to Weber underneath. Tipped away by the Lakers. Fisher has it. And here's Fisher in the front court. Gives That's to it. Devin George. The game is over. And the series goes to the world champion Los Angeles Lakers. Kobe Bryant, let me ask you a question. Is it harder to defend the title or to win the title initially? Oh, it's much harder to defend it. <laughs> man, they gave us a run for our money, man. And I, I'm sure everybody in L.A. was on pins and needles. And uh, you know, it was a hell of a series. Woo! I don't think anybody on our team would have had that series go any other way to play seven games against a great basketball team and to win the first game and the last game in their building, you know, that's the way you want to do it when you're talking about being a champion. Me, 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 me. Winning a, la, 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 winning a championship, take everything you got. <laughs> Sacramento, they thought it was the year, but I'm telling you it's not. <laughs> Flotty said that we don't have home court advantage, we won't win. What? Flotty, are you stupid? I'll tell you time again. You need to go when they know your name. And <laughs> the Lakers, we know how to play the game. <laughs> you say that we would win at your place. Guess what? Kobe dunked it in your face. You need to go where people know your name. <laughs> But while Shaq led the cheers for the Lakers, they still faced one final obstacle. Jason Kidd and the New Jersey Nets, who had stunned the basketball world. Kidd, alley up! Oh, what a sensational pass from Jason Kidd! The Nets had long been an NBA laughing stock, but in 2002, no one was laughing any longer. After winning just 26 games the year before, the Nets had achieved the best record in the Eastern Conference. And now, transformed by the arrival of Kidd, they had reached the finals for the first time ever. The New Jersey Nets will continue one of the most remarkable one-season turnarounds in NBA history. Maybe the world is flat after all. The New Jersey Nets are going to the NBA Finals. MVP! So repeat, baby, Lakers back to back to back. For all you Laker haters, step aside. We're rolling through, no stopping us now. Three P, baby, three P. Good evening, welcome everybody to the 2002 NBA Finals. The Lakers go for a three P. This is a back to back to back to back to B Zach. Three P, baby. We expected them to be here, but how about the New Jersey Nets climbing from 26 victories to 52 to a conference championship? Yeah, they're not getting any respect as we start this series. Who are the Nets anyway? I don't know who they are, but we know who Shaq is. The Dominator. It's no surprise to see the Lakers here. They've been the NBA's dominant team in recent seasons, and they're already being mentioned among the great teams of all time. But the Eastern Conference representative is really a surprise. Can the heavily, heavily underdog New Jersey Nets, can they win possibly here tonight? Hey guys, this is my first one. First one on one right here. Okay? We're going to win our first one together. We're going to win our first one together. Everybody's had something to do with us getting here. Let's not stop now. There are a lot of other factors of why the Nets are here, but Jason Kidd is the main one. He is the, the epitome of the game's best point guard. Hey, you all right? Everything good? Yeah, good. Go have fun. We're not supposed to go and do Just have fun. You make sure everybody have fun. It's the greatest show on earth. Red light, green light, go back. Red light, green light, go back. Red light, green light, go back. Red light, green light, one, two, three, As the series began, the Lakers would use a familiar plan of attack. He can do whatever he wants on McCullough. There's nothing there. Kobe dribbling. Where are you going, Kobe? Does a 360 turn. Throws it in left-handed. Brilliant play. On defense, they would send an early and emphatic message. Rejected by O'Neal. Shaq showing why he's the man in the middle. Fox rips the ball out of his hand. What a play defensively by Foxy. 
with everything clicking, L.A. was giving the Nets a first-hand demonstration of their championship form. Shaw, bounce the ball back door to Kobe, slam dunk, and Los Angeles off to an easy lead. Scoring at will, the Lakers led by 23 points in the second quarter and seemed headed for an early knockout. The Lakers playing as well as they can play. New Jersey Nets are in a state of panic. And no matter what the Lakers tried, the Nets seemed helpless to stop it. Kobe looking for a run on Kettles. Penetrates. Dribble behind the back. Feed the Shaq. Fumbles it. Picks it up. Shaq couldn't handle. Now the wrap around. Oh, that was a great play by Kobe. He fooled Shaq. Everything's working. That's why they're the two-time defending world champions. That's why they're a 7-1 to one favorite to three-peat. So we get whatever we want. But even as the Lakers discussed their success, the Nets were busy plotting their counterattack. We got to get in our running game, all right? Chip away at it, guys. You know how we played the last time we were down 20 to these guys who came back. Okay, so let's stay in there. Just chip away. The Nets had stumbled in their entrance on the game's biggest stage, but gradually they began to find their footing. Harris bounce pass, Jefferson with a layup, and the Nets score. Demonstrating their resilience, the Nets would begin to claw their way back. Van Horn, here's the three ball, yes! They have gotten a little confidence with this surge. Sensing a Laker letdown, the relentless Jason Kidd kept the pressure on. Let's see what Jason Kidd's got. Drives to hard, the right side on Samaki, yes! And the foul! A gorgeous shot by Jason Kidd! Just a fine run by New Jersey. Phil Jackson cannot be at all happy. Now let's get our momentum again. Let's get our momentum back again. And let's turn it up a notch, man. Come on. Let's turn it up. With the game on the line, the Lakers would look to their combo, and both stars would answer the call. Kobe dribble drive. Kobe. Oh, what a slam dunk! <laughs> My God. Jack wants it. Here it is. Shaquille O'Neal, the ringleader throughout the game for Los Angeles. Overpowering the Nets down the stretch, Shaq and the Lakers would seal game one. This game is in the refrigerator. The door is closed. The lights are out. The eggs are pulling. The butter getting hard. The jello jiggling. Los Angeles wins game one of the NBA Finals in their quest for a three-peat. Nobody's come up with a way to stop Shaq. If it was 20,000 people here, you could have put them all on the floor. You're still not going to stop that guy. I think the best way to defeat him is to try to figure out what car he's going to drive and put sand or something in the gas tank or sugar. Because uh, if he makes it to the arena, you're going to be in trouble. Heading into game two, the Nets were faced with a mission that seemed to be impossible. What it comes down to is stopping one man, the most physically dominant center, maybe the most physically dominant player ever to play in this game. He is Wilt Chamberlain reincarnated. Wilt Chamber Neasy. That's my alter ego. Right now, I'm just playing on Shaq. And once the ball comes up, bring it to me. <laughs> Drop step, hook, dunk, free throws, fadeaways, bringing it up court, look away pass, blah, 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 blah. Getting yelled at by Phil. Game two, time to, time to strap them on. We gotta get this one tonight. Game time, show time. But the more you whine, the more bigger I get. And the more bigger I get, I get strong. And the more stronger I get, nobody can stop me. And no one could take issue with Shaquille O'Neal because no one had stopped him in game one. So as game two began, the Lakers' strategy couldn't have been more clear. They would deliver the ball to their big man early and often, and let him prove his point once again. Perfect execution of the triangle offense. Crisp passing and resulting in the layup. Shaq wants it low on McCullough. He wants to go. Here he is. Lambs a one-hander down on the Canadian. Shaq, before the game in the team huddle, said, bring me the ball inside. And he said it in a way that made everyone realize that he wanted to take this series upon his shoulders and carry us to another championship. They cannot stop 34. That's 
look dazed, Brent. And the sack man is doing it all by himself. Shaq is coming down the court. You got to bump him or hold him up or do something. You can't let the guy go by and just get a dunk twice. Undersized and overmatched, the Nets would grasp desperately for a way to slow down the Shaq Diesel. And this has not been fought for Todd McCullough, Aaron Williams, and, and Jason Collins. And when the New Jersey defense swarmed around Shaq, he would calmly turn to his teammates. The big fella, folks. He's just like a big, overgrown kid who loves to play. What do you do with the big fella, Chip? Nothing. Nothing you can do with it. Throw it down, big man. Throw it down. All the beleaguered Nets could do was foul him. But even that was to no avail as Shaq made 12 of 14 free throws. A great philosopher by the name of Shaquille O'Neal only once said, what, what you think of is what you become of. We needed those free throws on the stretch. So we need them, I hit them. Shaq makes another free throw. Wow. Listen to the ovation for Shaquille O'Neal as he sits down. Even the PA announcer is up cheering. No cheering in the press box, my friend. Shaq had 40 points, 12 rebounds, and 8 assists. What can I say, guys? Too much Shaquille O'Neal. You know, he's, uh, he's a monster. That's all I can say about him. Bad business for them. It's bad business for them. That's it. That's all I can say. The same thing we've been doing. Don't switch it up. You know what I'm talking about. Let's play. Two more wins. You know what we gotta do. First ever NBA Finals game played here. The Lakers with a two games to none lead. The pivotal swing game here. It's either gonna be 2 1 Lakers with the Nets a chance to even it up in game four, or it'll be a commanding three games to none lead. That's about high intensity and that energy that we've been playing with all season long. Back home, the Nets emerged with new life and hit their first four shots as things were finally falling their way. McCullough's rolling, hooks through the paint, rolls back in, and the Nets are absolutely dead perfect. Fisher penetrates, keeps on coming down the lane, giving over now to Shaq, in the paint, jump shot, one-handed slam. Yeah, take that. The Lakers had withstood the Nets' early barrage and they would counter with one of their own. Here's Los Angeles, looking for an early lead. Kobe Bryant drives on the right wing, and there it is. Los Angeles ahead again. The Lakers were out to remove any doubts about their superiority. The job for Los Angeles is to crush the spirit, the hopes and the dreams of the Nets. By midway through the second quarter, the Lakers led by 13 and seemed well on their way to another comfortable victory. But the Nets were determined to show that this game would be different. They would regroup and respond with a furious comeback. Bad pass. Here's Martin. Here are numbers. Back outside. Van Horn's three. Yes. Keith Van Horn nails the three. The Nets showing some life here and hearing it from the crowd. There's Katie and Martin. Steal. Nets have got it. Numbers. Jefferson drop around. Nets are right back at the Lakers' throat. It's 50-46, trailing by four. Great rally here by New Jersey. Let's keep running. Okay, let's not settle on just walking it up and down the floor. Let's keep attacking these guys. Get on the attack, bounce pass. Oh, okay. Jefferson, what a comeback by the Nets. Well, we've got a game now that is only 12 minutes long. 
thanks to the net having an 8 nothing run to end the quarter. Come on, baby, let's go from here. The same type of energy. Okay, the same type of energy. Make sure we continue to communicate on the defensive bend and rebound the ball and let's keep this place up. Okay, let's go. Kid around a college screen, lobs it for Martin Junction with two hands. The alley -oop from Kid to Martin. Dangerous times here for Los Angeles. New Jersey, they have found their game. Their crowd is right there. This is the first time they've had the champions on their heels in two and a half games. The Nets had proven that they could mount a legitimate threat. Now it was the Lakers who had something to prove. Hey, fellas, we're battle tested. We battle tested, baby. You know what we gotta do. And Kobe's words would prove to be prophetic. It was his turn to lead the Lakers, and clearly, he was ready. Here comes Kobe on the attack, running tough shot from the right side of the lane, puts it down for Los Angeles, and Kobe Bryant will have to carry the load. Kobe spins, comes down the lane, and floats it in from six feet. A beauty. That's no. To make a series of it, they've got to hang on and win this game. Lakers get it into Shaq. He is double and triple deep. Back outside of Ory's three. And Robert Ory nails the three ball at a critical time. There it is. The Lakers lead it by two, 98-96. Despite the Lakers' run, the Nets showed no sign of surrender. They would fight desperately to regain control of this pivotal contest, fueled by their leader, Jason Kidd. Put it back in Kidd's hands. Five on the shot. The put up a ball. Good. Jason Kidd knocks it down. It's a two-point game. If they score, call a timeout. If they score, call a timeout. If they score, right? Don't let that happen, please. In the game's waning moments, the net still held a glimmer of hope. But the Lakers would hold their ground. Just under. Now, all that remained was for Kobe to put the game away for good. But back to Kobe. They're milking seconds. Kobe spins, double, loose, picks it up, fights his way for 13 feet, and nails it to make it a four-point lead. Kobe Bryant fought his way in for the field goal. Kobe Bryant showing great muscle, 36 points. Angeles wins and puts a stranglehold on three-peat. When Kobe's 23, 24 years old, he's got a, a lot more years left in this league, and he's going to get better. That's the scary part. One more, one more. Ladies and gentlemen, the brooms are out in New Jersey. Please, 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 please. No Los Angeles or Minneapolis Lakers team ever won the finals in a sweep. Tonight, the Lakers can do just that. Three, feet sweep! The question is not if they're going to win a championship, it's when they're going to win a championship. No three-peat tonight, Lakers! No three-peat tonight! I don't think there's any question the Nets are going to come out free and easy, give it their best shot. It's about going out and competing, doing the very best that you can do, giving everything that you got, putting it all out there on the floor and leaving it there. And the only thing that should be on our mind is game four. That's it. Nothing else. Everything else, you should just let go and concentrate on this one game. Because that's all we have right now to live for is this one game. On the edge of elimination, the Nets would try to postpone what now seemed inevitable. But the Lakers had learned the importance of having a killer instinct and were just as determined to finish them off. Back to Kobe. He drives. One-handed jam. Kobe Bryant. Still, the Nets would play valiantly behind an inspired effort from Kenyon Martin, who would finish with 35 points. New Jersey had set out to make this game a competition instead of a coronation. Jason Kittle bring it to the attack. Quickly right side, Jefferson on a running one-handed slam. Ignites the crowd. We gotta get some D down there, guys. Let's get some pressure on the shooter. The guys aren't standing out there just shooting the ball with no pressure on them. Answering Phil's challenge, the Lakers' defense would begin to clamp down on the Nets at every turn. 
blocked by Shaquille. And you can feel it now. The Lakers in a surge. And role players like Devin George stepped up to stagger the Nets, followed by the one-two punch of Kobe and Shaq. A facial served up by Shaquille O'Neal. It's up to the Nets. They've got to come out and generate some defensive energy and turn into a sprint team and finally get control of the game. Come on, let's, uh, let's get right back in in five minutes. Right here. Play just like we started the game with a lot of energy and aggressive on both ends. Fighting for their survival, New Jersey would stage a fourth quarter rally. For the Lakers, it was one more test. And one more time to remind themselves of just how they had become champions. The selflessness that each of us have had over the past you know, three years is what's made us a great team. When you have a group of men working together with that type of resolve and respect for each other, you're not just faced against five guys out on the floor, you're faced against a team of 15 people, and that's what's made us great. And powered by their total team effort, the Lakers would make their final push. Again they swing it, again the open shot, again they hit. And in the end, fittingly, it was their leader who would deliver the knockout blow. O'Neal with the strong move on McCullough. Three Pete is in their eyes. When you talk about great teams, you talk about the, the Pistons, you talk about the Bulls, you talk about the old Lakers. Talking about the Celtics, of course. I think if you talk about these Lakers that I'm playing with, they want to be mentioned also. Three, two, one. A three-peat and a sweep for the world champion Los Angeles Lakers. Phil Jackson has won his ninth NBA championship and third in a row with the Los Angeles Lakers, who are now embracing a former Laker great, Coach Byron Scott. Good season. Kevin, boy, you played your ass off. No problem. Every day I feel like I'm lucky and blessed, and right now it just seems like it's supposed to happen. This is where I'm supposed to be every year. Um, I never take it for granted. That's what I'm talking about. All right. I love you, boy. I love you. I love you. I love you. Three, that's three. That's the triple right there. Shaquille O'Neal, no question, the most valuable player of the series, becoming the third player to win the NBA Finals MVP award three times, only the second player to win it three consecutive times, the other, Michael Jordan. Can only be one champion, and we have a worthy one. The Los Angeles Lakers. They are a team for the ages. That's right. They go on for team. <laughs> one, two, three! One, two, three! One, two, three! One, two, three! Hey, like this. Seven on earth right now, that's for sure. <laughs> worthy of the championship opportunity, you have to first respect the legacy that has come before you, the guys and the teams that have played at this high level to win three in a row. And, and once you can acknowledge that and respect that, then you make yourself worthy. And then by going out on the floor and seizing the moment, then you can stand at the end of the day and look at it and say, wow, you know, not only am I a three-time NBA champion, but you know, I'm worthy of it. Congratulations, greatest. Congratulations, the most dominant. You take that jersey off, put your own jersey on, man. About time now? Yeah. <laughs> Y'all look for this? Y'all <laughs> <laughs> look for this? What did I say last year at the parade? I'm going to give you a few seconds to go back and look. I got up here last year and said we was going to do it again. I'm saying it again. We're going to three-peat. Can you dig it? I told you. Number three. I'm going to be trying to get four. Love you. Check it out.
we'll see you back here again. But until then, have fun, enjoy your summer, and remember, don't hate the Lakers, can't be stopped.